Hi, my name is Eric Shaw, and this is the Big Happy Day Yoga video series. So the Yoga Sutras has become a primary text of the modern yoga tradition. We kind of look to it as our primary authority for yoga practice. I want to describe the philosophy of the Yoga Sutras so that people can understand what's in this book if they haven't read it, or enlighten what they've already read about it. The Yoga Sutras appeared on the scene about the year 200 of the Common Era, and it summed up a lot of the knowledge from the Upanishads, which were a group of texts which were written before it, but it was also very, very strongly influenced by the Buddhism of the day. And Buddhism, of course, was a technique which was mostly a mental technique. Buddhism's root practice is a Vipassana practice, a practice in which we're taught to observe the movement of the mind. And the goal of the practice, Nirvana, means the blowing out of the mind, the blowing out of the mental activity which is very consistent with the second sutra of the Yoga Sutras, Yoga Shitta Vritti Narodaha. Yoga is the blocking or tamping down, or we might even say blowing out of the mind stuff, the mind activity. So yoga, the yoga of the Yoga Sutras is not a body yoga. Even though Kepatabi Joyce named his yoga Ashtanga Yoga, the eight-limbed yoga, after the system in the Yoga Sutras, the Yoga Sutras itself is not a Hatha Yoga. It's a Raja Yoga, it's a royal yoga, a classical yoga. These are other names that we use for it. But it's a yoga of meditation. It's a yoga of figuring out how the mind works and then do, kind of doing an in-run around it, enhancing the capacity of the mind to concentrate so that a profound self-reflection happens in which the nature of your very own consciousness is seen and you transcend it. So Raja Yoga, the yoga of the, of the Yoga Sutras, is not a whole body yoga. You can draw suggestions from the text that relate to the whole body. And there's a certain uh, chapter, the third chapter, in which certain miraculous powers, you're taught how to do certain miraculous powers with the body. But ultimately, it's not about that. It's about creating the capacity for what's called samyama. Samyama is a skill in which you bring together the capacities of concentration, meditation, and extreme concentration, what we call um, dharana, jhana, and samadhi. So if you can gain that skill, that skill of samyama, you can focus on the nature of your own perception and see through it so that you actually transform your idea of who, who you are, the, the person who's actually having the perception in the first place. And at that point, you attain complete independence of mind, which is called kaivalya. But what I'm emphasizing, it's a neck up approach. It's, a, it's an attempt to teach you to create some profound action in the mind a capacity to concentrate, unlike we normally do in regular, everyday human consciousness. So you can see through the fabric of reality and the fabric of your own being and sense of identity. So when you study the sutras, think about these things. Think about some of these goals that the um, sutras suggest to us. And I hope that it will help you on your path. Blessings on your day. I'm Eric Shaw. Be well.